Hashtag. 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 <laughs> Ebook. Most recent in your haul or something. Huh? What? <laughs> yeah, like an amazing job with like descriptions and like I'm saying like a lot. Damn. Whew. Oh, and these books. This book. Not these books. Because I haven't read these books yet. I've only read this book. There's a big spider. There's a spider. It's a big one. Um, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? I don't want to squish it. Oh my god, what do I do? What do I do? It's moving towards me. <laughs> the spider has been removed from the frame. We are good. I killed the spider. Just call me Spider Killer. Pew pew. It's dead now. Also, my leg is asleep and I'm not having fun with it. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Jay, and today I'm here with my hashtag TBR Takedown 4.0 wrap up video. It is run by Shannon over at Leaning Lights so I will leave her link down below if you want to check her out. The TBR Takedown is a readathon that took place from June 20th to June 26th, which is today. And technically I could still read more books if I wanted to, but here I am filming, so I'm not. So without further ado, let us get started. Wow. There were a total of five challenges for this readathon. Which I completed them all. Pat on the back, Jan. Pat on the back, Jan. Thank you, Jan. You're welcome, Jan. <laughs> I technically actually read seven books this week. So, I mean, like, I feel like I should get, like, a bonus prize for reading two extra books. I'm almost done in third extra book, but I'm filming this at, like, three o'clock on a Sunday. So I'll probably finish it. So, you know. <laughs> I'm going to talk about the two extra books like in my regular wrap up for the month because I'm just going to do the ones that the challenges are actually for. So the first challenge that I completed is to read the first book in a series and I read The Selection by Kira Cass. I really like this book. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. It was real good. Cool. It's about a girl named America Singer and in the country of Ilya there is a caste system in place, which is basically your, like, ranking, I guess. So, like, ones are the royal court, two and threes are wealthy, five, six, seven, eights are kind of, like, the middle class, not so wealthy, all the way to, like, beggars. And America Singer is a five, and the boy that she loves, whose name is Aspen, is a six. And she has always believed that they're going to get married, even though it's frowned upon to marry below your caste. She is in love, so it's gonna happen, you know? There's a competition called The Selection, which is where any female age 16 to 21 goes into this competition, basically trying to win the prince's heart once he comes of age to become the new princess of Ilya. And America wants nothing to do with this competition because, you know, she's already found her man, she's in love, she's ready to get married, tie the knot, have little baby America and Aspen's running around everywhere. With the constant persistent pleading of Aspen and her mom, she decides that she'll enter the competition with the thought that she will not be picked, obviously, because thousands of people are applying, and therefore, how could she be picked? Uh, but she is picked. America ends up getting picked, and she is one of the 35 girls who are now in the competition to win Prince Maxon's heart. I actually did really like America as a character. I know a lot of people don't like her. They think she's annoying. Which she is. She is very annoying. But I actually really enjoyed her. I thought she was funny. And the things that she would come up with to say back to Maxon. I, I thought they were hilarious, and I was laughing. And I would like to be her friend, because I think she would be great to hang out with. I did think that she was very indecisive all the time, which was really annoying, because one second she was like, I love Maxon, and then the other second she was like, but Aspen is so attractive, and he's so nice to me, but Maxon. And it was like, girl, just pick one. I personally would pick Maxon, because Team Maxon all the way. I usually hate love triangles, because I can never decide who I want to cheer for. But I'm thinking it's Maxon. Well, I know it's Maxon, because I've read all three of the books, but when I finished this book, I thought it was like 99.99% Maxon, and then Aspen would come, and I was like, ooh, you're kind of cute. The book was super fast-paced. I read it in a sitting, and... I highly recommend the series. I'm gonna talk about the other two books, not in as much detail, but highly recommend the selection series because it's it's hecka good. The second challenge was to read a sequel, so of course I read The Elite, also by Kira Cass. Gave this book a four out of five stars as well. I think I liked it not as much as the selection. I think it was a little bit slower, not as much drama because personally drama makes me happy. I think America was slightly more annoying in this book, and her indecisiveness was a lot more prominent. She was going back and forth between the two boys like there's no tomorrow. Girl, pick Maxon. It's the obvious choice. Aspen's annoying. I didn't like him in this book. 100% Team Maxon at this point. The whole series is basically The Bachelor. 
in book format. You know it's a train wreck, you know it's trash, but you gotta know what happens. I just... I love this series. Like, it is complete trash, but it is such a guilty pleasure read. Like, and the whole thing with Marley broke my heart. That was so sad. Marley is so cute, and it was just so depressing to read about. If you don't know what I'm talking about, read the book. I'm sure you've read the book. Everybody has read the book. But I was depressed. The third challenge was one of book that was in your most recent haul, so I went with The One by Kira Cass. <laughs> I also gave this book a 4 out of 5 stars. I also read this book in one sitting. It was pretty fast paced. I think it was not as much drama as the other two books. And the ending was pretty predictable. But I mean, like, you could call it from, like, the very beginning of the series when you first started reading it. So it's not that big of a deal. But I liked how it ended. Thought it was cute. Happy with the entire series. I gave every single book 4 out of 5 stars, so... Complete trash, but love it. The next challenge was to read the book that has been on your shelf the longest. Did end up going with is The Scorpio Races by Maggie Steve Otter. I gave the book a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. On November 1st of every year, The Scorpio Races occur in Thisbe, and it's basically this race where you race Kappa Ishkas, which are water horses, and they're basically flesh-eating horses that live in the water. Personally, I don't know why you would live here if there were horses that were eating people, but, you know, apparently it's a thing. The winner of the race basically gets a small fortune and also bragging rights, and the losers either get their life, but more often than not, they're probably dead now. So, why you would want to be in this race, I don't know, because I would personally stay far, far away, but, you know, I'm a coward, apparently. So, Sean Kendrick is the champion for the past four years, and he rides on his horse, Cor, and he is obviously expected to win for the fifth year this year. Until Puck Connolly enters the race, and she is the first girl to ever enter the races, and she gives him a little run for his money. Although I did really enjoy the overall, like, atmosphere of the story, and I thought that the concept of the water horses was very interesting, I thought that the pacing was really slow and it just kind of dragged on and on and I just didn't catch my interest the way I wanted it to. Because so many people say how amazing this book is and I just, it didn't sit well with me, like it was interesting but I wasn't like, oh my god, this is the best book I've ever read, there's so much action, like there was no action at all and I expected there to be a lot more action. I liked how the story was told in dual perspective between Sean and Puck and I liked how their relationship took a very long time to develop. Because we all know instant love is not my thing. It basically took the entire book for it to develop. I really enjoyed the relationship between the horses and the riders. I thought that was really interesting how Maggie Steve Otter talked about that a lot more than like relationships between the people. I think that Maggie Steve Otter did a really good job with her descriptions. It was really easy to imagine everything in your head while you were reading and you felt like you were on this I did not enjoy all the violence in this book. There was so much animal violence and it just made me sad, which is like, obviously they're flesh-eating horses so there's gonna be violence, but I was just like, mm -hmm, sad. And the final challenge, which I put off for two books because I was like, no, 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 is to read a book that is outside your comfort zone. So the book that I chose was The Motoral Instruments, City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. Guys, I finally read this book. It was so good. It was so good. I don't know why I put it off so long. Well, I do know because it's terrifying, but I loved it so much. I ended up giving it a 4.5 stars out of 5 on Goodreads. There was some stuff that I was like, meh, but mostly I was like, yes! See, I don't think I need to give a synopsis for this book, but I'm gonna do it anyways, because, like, everybody and their mother has read this book, but I'm gonna do it anyways, like I just said, so deal with it. If you don't want to watch my synopsis, then skip ahead, then go. The book follows Clary Frey, and she is 15 years old, and one night she attends a nightclub with her best friend Simon, and that is when she sees this boy with blue hair get murdered by three teenagers. These three teenagers are named Jace Wayland and Alec and Isabel Lightwood. And they are shadow hunters, and the boy was actually a demon. Da -da -da, da -da -da. And she goes back to the institute with them, and that's where she meets Hodge, who is their tutor, and her life basically changes forever. I think the plot twist in this book was so well executed. I had watched the movie before and I was like, oh, I'm gonna remember everything. It's gonna be so annoying like to read a book that you've already watched the movie before. But honestly, I didn't remember anything. I remembered like two of the major plot twists, but like that was because when they happened in the movie, I was like, <clears throat> you probably know what I'm talking about if you've read the book. But I was just like, oh my God, that really sucks. Ooh. Super, super thrilling. I don't think there was a part in the book where I was bored and was like, oh my God. 
I think the chapters were a little long and I was like counting till the end of them. I loved every single character in this book. Like, like literally every single one I was like, I love you so much. Magnus Bane, 100% my favorite. I think he is fabulous. I am so excited for more of him. I think Alec is adorable. I want Alec and Magnus to get together. I, I also really like Simon. I found him kind of annoying at times when he was like whining about everything. But he is so witty and sarcastic and honestly he would make the best best friend in the entire world because I am witty and sarcastic. Yes, I am witty. Deal with it. It's, it's a thing, I swear. I would hang out with him every day. He deserves so much better than Clary. Simon, I got you, boo. Give me a call. Give me a call, Simon. I'll hook you up with myself. Although, like, I guess Isabelle is, like, a close second to me, so I'm okay with them getting together, but, like, preferably date me, Simon. There's something's gonna happen in the other books that I'm gonna be like, why did I say that? I hate Simon. He's so annoying. I don't want him to like me. But right now, Simon, I love you. I also really like Jace. I like how sarcastic he is. I like his comebacks to Clary. I like how he put her in her place at times. Because she was annoying at times. She drove me crazy at times. Did really like her though. But, you know, girl, mature please. Because you're kind of annoying. It did really bother me how, like, everybody would drop everything whenever Clary was like, Help me! My life is terrible! I think she definitely acts like she's 15, so... You know, good, good on you, Cassandra Clare, for making a reliable 15-year-old because she was dang annoying sometimes. Ugh. I loved Valentine. I think he's the perfect villain. I hated him so much, but I loved him at the same time. He was so mean, and I just, yes. All right, guys, so that was my hashtag TBR Takedown 4.0 wrap-up video. Mouthful. Did it. Yes. Congratulations, Jan. Thank you. I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye. Yeah. Hashtag TBR 4.0 takedown, whatever you want to call it. What is it called? Mm.